Russians attack like crazy in Kharkiv. Kremlin wants to create a buffer zone here. The Russian offensive in the northern Kharkiv region has created one of the most significant problems since the start of the war for Ukrainian troops, which are low on ammunition and exhausted from fighting along a vast front line. According to The Hill, although the occupiers do not have the strength to capture significant territories in the area, enemy troops advanced relatively easily and forced Ukraine to deploy reserve units. This could threaten Ukrainian positions elsewhere on the front. Political science professor Branislav Slanchev, who studies war at the University of California, San Diego, said Russia is trying to seize territory while there is a small window to receive military aid from allies. We see the weakest Ukraine. The Russians are using this window and storming like crazy because they know that by the middle or end of summer, the situation will stabilize. The Ukrainians are in trouble now and the next few months will be very critical, the expert stressed. Russia is advancing with armored vehicles, artillery fire, glide bombs and precision guided munitions which Ukraine finds difficult to defend against, especially with its air defense lacking. The enemy captured several villages and approached the occupation of Volchansk from where Ukraine began to evacuate thousands of civilians. According to Russian military bloggers, the invaders have already entered the northern part of Volchansk where fierce fighting continues. The Russian Ministry of Defense claims that occupation forces occupied towns near Volchansk, in particular Bugrovatka. The Kharkov offensive revealed a certain disappointment with US policy. Ukrainian officials have pushed for stronger air defenses to protect embattled regions such as Kharkiv. They also want Washington to allow the use of American weapons to strike Russia, including the Belgorod region near Kharkov, but the White House has categorically refused. Michael Bonnet from the RAND Corporation, which specializes in defense technologies, expressed concern about the number of people in the ranks of the armed forces of Ukraine. At the same time, he said that Russia's advance was explained precisely by the lack of ammunition and resources in Ukraine, which were depleted due to a month-long delay in new US military assistance. Russian troops are also making gradual advances in the eastern Donetsk region after occupying Avdiivka in February, slowly advancing towards Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. In this regard, the enemy's actions in the Kharkiv region may indicate the Kremlin's strategy to create a buffer zone between Russia and Ukraine to protect Russia's border regions from attacks by Ukrainian drones. Although it is difficult to take Kharkiv, the Russian Federation can surround the city and apply enormous pressure. F-16s for Ukraine The instructor pilot said when fighters will be able to enter Crimea. After complete clearance of Russian air defense systems and radio technical troops, F-16 fighters, which Ukraine will soon receive, will be able to operate in the temporarily occupied Crimea. This opinion was shared by military expert, instructor, pilot and reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine, Roman Svitan. The first task of any aircraft that enter fighters is to gain superiority in the air. It begins with the destruction of the enemy's air defense, radar systems and anti-aircraft missile systems. This can be done even before the aircraft themselves enter. This is what we are seeing now. Strikes for enemy air defense. This is precisely preparation for the entry of fighters who will then continue to clear the space with the help of anti-location missiles and work against enemy aircraft. He said on the Kiev 24 TV channel. The expert noted that for such attacks, missiles transferred to Ukraine are most likely used ATA CMS, Storm Shadow and Scalp can reach Ipetri. Of the Ukrainian missiles, Neptune can reach there, Svitan added. This range allows us to eliminate Russian air defense. After the Russians have been completely cleared of air defense systems and radio technical troops, it will be possible to operate aviation in Crimea. It will even be possible to go there. The combat radius of these aircraft allows us to carry out this task. Roman Svitan summed up. F-16 fighters from Denmark will be at the disposal of the Ukrainian Air Force within a month. This was announced by Prime Minister Met Frederiksen. Denmark planned to send 19 such aircraft to Ukraine. Defense expert and analyst at the Hague Center for Strategic Studies, Frederik Mertens, believes that the supply of these fighters could play a decisive role in Ukraine's attempts to return occupied Crimea. The peninsula will become especially vulnerable after Ukraine receives these fighters. An economist leads army. New York Times revealed what tasks were set for Russian defense minister. For Vladimir Putin, the appointment of a new defense minister is new building material for waging a long war. 
Economist Andriy Belosov, appearing in public for the first time as head of the Ministry of Defense, spoke about bureaucracy, not about the battlefield, writes the New York Times. Journalists say it signals a recognition that the military production that fuels Russia's war and fuels the Russian economy must be carefully managed to withstand a war of attrition. At the same time, Russia is playing a long game on the battlefield. Belusov noted the bureaucratic details of the fast-growing military effort and made no reference to the situation at the front. He said his priority was improving the standards of care and living standards for soldiers, veterans and their families. The excessive paperwork that soldiers face when receiving benefits, he said, should be resolved within the framework of interdepartmental electronic coordination. The authors point out that such statements were a striking example of how the sudden rise of a taciturn economic policy expert at the head of a vast military apparatus became a new component of Putin's strategy to defeat Ukraine and the West in a war of attrition. The article indicates that Putin is focused on subordinating the country's economy to his military needs, counting on the fact that a war in Ukraine or at least a militarized confrontation with the West could determine Russia's future for years to come. Putin's priority is war, and the war of attrition is won by the economy, said Alexander Prokopenko, a former Russian central banker who now works at the Carnegie Eurasia Center in Berlin. During his more than six years as Putin's economic advisor, Belosov gained a reputation as a staunch supporter of the dominant role of the state in the economy and high government spending. The appointment of a methodical bureaucrat to oversee Russia's war effort also coincides with the consolidation of Russia's slower strategy on the battlefield. Failed attempts to overwhelm the enemy in the first month of the 2022 invasion with armored strikes and landings have given way to a systematic breakdown of Ukrainian defenses along much of the front. This strategy allowed the Russian Federation to use its superiority in manpower and firepower to gradually advance against Ukraine's overstretched and exhausted defenders.